the reason I got into glass blowing is like slightly complicated and I'm not even quite sure like which facet of it I like more, but I've been making bongs since like I was in seventh grade. Like long before I ever smoked. And I don't know why, but like making bongs is a very social art because compared to like any other form, it's like a piece that can be handed around and it's talked about. And I don't know, there's just something beautiful about it. It's like, what other piece of art am I gonna use three times a day? So when I start, I always start with a warm-up piece because you never want to like have time invested in something gorgeous and you just go in on something you've already spent multiple hours working on and ruin it in the first two minutes, which I've done numerous times. So I've like started to make a production rig at the beginning of every day while my kiln's warming up. And then when it gets to actually building, if it's like new pieces, I love to uh, like just stick these color patterns together. There's something so aesthetically pleasing about all these different colors that are blending together and in these like very unique patterns that are never reproducible. I mean that's something cool is all day, no matter what I'm doing, usually I'm thinking about glass blowing and it's like what what am I gonna make next? And there's infinite possibilities and there's so many techniques that it's like, it just depends what you're ready for. And so it's like every day could be something new and oftentimes it is. And it's like one of the most exciting things to just like come home and turn on the torch. But I don't know, the funny thing is whenever I turn on the torch, I have trouble thinking of what I wanna make, even though that's all I think about. And at some point, like you get past it and I'll have these certain like, these just these weeks and one week I'll make bubble caps and the next week I'll make rigs but there's always time to just like you just build and like even when you're assembling pieces for like a rig there's like there's just so many steps that you you have the glass in so many different shapes and forms while you're doing it that it just like I don't know it inspires you to do something different and I don't know it's just fun because there's infinite techniques and like there's no there's no right or wrong, and like there's there's always the unknown, which is super cool. Like you never know when you're gonna stumble upon something new, and in glass, there's so many happy accidents that like it happens pretty pretty often. It's it's something fun, but I guess that's how you develop your technique. Is like you just as you're working, you pick up on these things that you like and. I don't know, at the end of each day you have some new, new spec, oh shit, some new specification you like, I don't know, some new feature that you like, and when I got into glass blowing, I was very, I don't know, I, was, I would say I was closed-minded, and that comes to like, all arts, I like, kind of a perfectionist, and I have like one very clean style that I like, and I've trying to been, trying to expand that a little bit recently, but when it comes to glass blowing, I liked a beaker, and that was just about it, like a straight neck, maybe a maria or two, but the like the shape of a beaker and the how clean all the lines are, and it's just like, I don't know, it was my favorite for a long time, but it's also one of the easier shapes to make when you're glass blowing, so recently I've been, like, up to this point I've made mostly beakers, and that's what I've stuck to, but as, like, I've progressed and... I'm able to do different things. It's definitely more fun to experiment with these shapes that are slightly more complex and they're fun, more fun to make. And although they can be a little bit more difficult to assemble and to finish, I don't know, it's just fun. Sometimes I'll, I'll set a limit and I'll try and get a piece done in an hour and like in an hour. Um, but by the end of the day, like I've spent numerous hours on it and it's gone far beyond my original expectations of it. But 
there's just something about the I don't know the maneuverability I don't know this you can yeah no shit it's like infinite possibilities I don't know any shape or form you can always change it um, if you don't like the way something is you can I don't know you can make a new one or you just can completely alter its form which is something that you can't always do um, a lot of mediums are relatively permanent and like you work step by step and that's how it is I mean the pieces are I don't know they're solidified at each step so at some point you can't go back and I don't know glass blowing it's it's very fun to just work as you go and you're like putting pieces together and as sometimes you just you don't know what you're doing and you let it build itself so i guess i think what i was getting into is like this aspect of glass blowing that's very unique and i mean it's it's definitely cool but it also gets you down a lot of the time but it's the fact that anything can go wrong in like i don't know in an instant um you'll have put mad hours into a piece and it'll crack and at some point it just like it oftentimes will ruin a piece and it's something that's like so hard to get back get past uh man oh <sighs> There's definitely more failure in glass blowing than any other medium I've worked with, and I've definitely I've had a lot of hobbies, and I've worked with a lot of mediums, and glass blowing has some of the coolest results. But it's also it's also one of the hardest, and the amount of work you wreck, like trying to get somewhere, can be devastating. But in the end, like you just look back at the progress you've made, and I don't know, it's astonishing. It's it's something great, but So, although I haven't met too many artists like in person, it was definitely, it's definitely inspiring to like talk to them, ask them questions and see them blow glass like face to face is very cool. Um, and just to be able to ask questions in person is, I don't know, it's an ex experience I've had with a lot of mediums, but it's also very cool to meet up with like these knowing artists and like, I don't know, talk about something mutual. It's I would say definitely the first glass door I knew um, was Miles. He's over in Northeast Minneapolis, and he was definitely a big reason I got into glass blowing. Um, and like since then, I've learned about a ton of other local artists who are all pretty skilled. And it's I don't know, they create beautiful work. And I don't know, there's a certain energy whenever you walk into like a glass studio or some place that has like just display places of glass with like professional lighting on them. I mean, it makes the glass look exceptionally good and it's just awesome to see when other artists have like collected local work and have all this on display. And it's like a, I don't know, it's a very cool feature of these places, but whenever I go to, to talk to these artists, it's, I don't know, it's fun being in their workspace. I'm at a point where I can make production work, but I don't know if I want to sell production work because you lose a lot of the profit. And so although like going to local stores and networking is gonna like really get my name out there, it's also nice just like talking to customers one-on-one -on -one and in addition to making more money, it's there's like a personal connection with each piece that's pretty cool. 
man, I guess I've had a long history with art, and I've, like, always been into building things, whether that's, like, I guess it started out um, when I was into, like, all the extreme sports. I don't know. I used to, I guess all the sports that, like, potentially were, were dangerous, I don't know. Those were the fun ones. Um, I used to be into, like, BMXing and skateboarding a lot, and building ramps was a big thing. Um, had a half pipe in my backyard for a few years. I would say that's definitely like the beginning of my construction and I've always loved putting things together. Um, <laughs> the amount of effort that has gone into everything and like the the speed at which I've progressed, I have to attribute to past arts, probably ceramics. It's very, working on glass is very similar to throwing on a wheel in terms of where you put pressure and how to change the shape or form of something. Since then, I've been I mean, blowing glass sometimes six to 10 hours a day. And I'll start at 10 and I'll just try and get some simple shit done. And I'll be like, I'm, I'm done by one. And next thing you know, I'm working on a big piece and you look at the clock and it's like four 4.30 and you've got one step to go. And you're like, you just fuck, you can't, you can't put it in the kiln and wait till the next day. So like, you just finish that shit up. But man, it is disoriented disorienting when you when you finish a piece and you go upstairs and it's like you better eat breakfast before you go to bed <laughs> it's light out i feel like i hit my stride around two in the morning that's when like big things happen um but yeah shit like 40 50 hours a week i would say in the last eight months i've like i don't know i've just made so much progress and it's so sad to see shit break, but I've been like in the final steps of so many different pieces like I, and just had them smash on the ground or crack. I mean like, oh shit, like pulled a bong out of the kiln one time to just double check it and it, and it cracked right in front of me. Like, can't help but think that was my fault for taking out of the kiln. It's, it's never gonna stop and pieces break like every day and it really gets me down until I look back at like where I was six months ago when I could barely work the size of a quarter, like a carb cap or something hard to complete. Um, and like now, I don't know, a carb cap's kinda, kinda easy as well as the, or like if we're talking about size range, I don't really have any problems with checking or whatnot, which is just like a crack caused by heat stress. Um, and so, I don't know, just looking back, it makes me happy whenever I'm like, get super pissed at the medium, which I do. I like, man, scream around and throw shit on the ground when it breaks, but I mean, it's all, in the long run, it's, it's an awesome medium, and I don't know, it makes me so happy. Like, shit, that's all I think about. Ah. Oh. glass that's a completely different thing and I I mean I love that too there are so many artists out there and they're all so different and at this point after blowing glass for a while like I've started to respect and like look for different things in a piece than I did I don't know eight months ago um, again when I started collecting it was like beakers and I just wanted this very clean shaping and since then like I don't know my my opinion has completely changed and like these pieces that are technically difficult um, that may not be like a simple beaker shape they're just I don't know they're they're beautiful but there's so many artists out there and they all have like such incredible techniques and they're all I don't know they're all very unique and shit it's like Pokemon collect them all <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta buy all the pieces
But shit, glass blowing is definitely it's definitely more exciting than any of the other ones. Um, it's one of the only mediums where I'm shaking to put things together, and it's not because like there might be a little bit of nervousness, but it's like I'm just so excited, and it's it's just oh my god, the the medium is like none other, and it's like working with such a pure element. It's I mean like equatable to carving carving marble. That's what like I would. I would definitely want to do that as well, but I don't know. Glass is more fun, so I'm gonna keep doing that. <laughs> 